Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Elise Carter. And this is another edition of Car Conversations on Jay Lee's Corner. Okay. I hope everybody having a great Tuesday. This is my second car conversation on my drive home today. But I'm like, I'm going to give y'all what I can give y'all before I get home. Um, if you have not done so already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel and become a whole Jaybird. Jaybird. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, and all that good shit. So this is like a little TV roundup thing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, also, don't forget to like this video. Uh, I just watched Teen Mom 2, the season finale. I also watched Below Deck Med. I'm looking like, oh, I, I just had comments and concerns about those. So I'm looking like, why not give y'all a, you know what I'm saying, a random car conversation, conversation about some shit. Uh, Teen Mom 2, which is into, I don't know, season eight, 85, episode 36, I don't know. Um, but Teen Mom 2 was the one that has, like, you know, um, uh, Cheyenne, Macy, Amber, the new girl, Mackenzie, and Caitlin, and, you know, and Caitlin. So, you know, I have been watching this, this season or whatever. I just haven't been talking about it. But I want to talk about today a little bit. This mainly because, you know, I've seen Cheyenne and Corey's girlfriend kind of finally have a conversation. You know, Corey's girlfriend, Taylor, has said some things about people of my color, you know, about seven, eight years ago when she was like 17, 18 years old. And those tweets came back up once she was dating Corey. And so, of course, it's like, you know what I'm saying? If you, don't, if you have a feeling about, you know what I'm saying, black people or whatever, I don't want you on my kids. And what I can respect is they had the conversation, you know, and the girl Taylor was like, you know, I said it because I just didn't know any better. Like, I was from a time where I didn't know I wasn't, you know, exposed to other people, to different races or whatever. And I just didn't know any better. You know, I had to live. I had to grow up. I had to see different places. I think people forget that if you are raised in a certain place, you don't know no better. What is good is that when you are raised somewhere you don't know no better, you grow up and you learn. And when you learn, you have to admit, yes, what I said was wrong. At the time, I didn't think it was wrong because that's all I knew. Um, we do, I, I do think people should be allowed to grow up and be better. Okay? Um, some people don't know about black people. Some black people don't know about black people. So, I mean, I wasn't too like, oh my God, you know, she's... She apologized. I didn't realize how young she was, even now, versus how young she was when she was 17, 18. I, I know for a fact, I said some crazy things when I was that age. So, I've never said nothing like, like she said. You know what I'm saying? But people say dumb stuff. So, I mean, like, it is what it is. Um, Caitlin and Tyler, you know, with them uh, giving up, not giving up, Caitlin and Tyler, you know, of course, um, place their daughter for adoption and people keep wanting to compare like because some people like well they gave her up or no they didn't give her up they placed her for adoption it is two different things i, I really do believe it some people give a kid away because they don't want the kid that's what some people do they don't care where the kid go they give it up for adoption because they don't they don't they, they don't want the child caitlin and tyler knew wanted her but they knew they could not take care of her. So they had to place her up for adoption because they couldn't take care of her. It's a big difference. It's a big difference. You know, a person who gives their kid up for adoption, no matter what their situation is, they wouldn't keep their child. You know what I'm saying? Whereas, had Caitlin and Tyler not been in such toxic, toxic situations back then at their young ages, I think they would have not placed her up for adoption but they kind of didn't have any choice and i think that's why they did the open adoption or partially open or whatever it was um back then i think the issue that we have to remember is that was season one of teen of, of 16 and pregnant like no one knew that 16 and pregnant would be on 10 years later and now it's not even 16 and pregnant now it's called teen mom so i think when they gave, when, when they placed her for adoption, when Teresa, her husband, I can't think right now, when Teresa and her husband, you know, adopted her, I don't think they thought they would have to live it through the cameras. And that's the hard part. And both the adoptive parents and the both parents have valid feelings on how to proceed. And something else, 
they don't have to let uh, Tyler and Kate have complete access to the baby girl. You know what I'm saying? So, I do feel like the older that Carly gets, the harder it gets because the more she understands, the more feelings are involved. And she, you know what I'm saying? It, it's hard for all people involved. But I do feel like a lot of people who were or are adopted would love to know their birth family and their birth parents and their birth siblings because once you get older, you have that connection. And so I feel like I hope that can happen. I, I feel like when Carly gets older, like once she's a teenager, I think Brandon, Brandon and Teresa. I don't think Brandon and Teresa are going to have the same control over how often she sees and talks to them. I think the older she gets, she probably is going to want to be connected to them more because she goes like, that's my family too. So I feel like in about five years, um, it'll be a little bit easier because it won't be Brandon and Teresa trying to protect Carly. It'll be Carly able to say, well, you know what, mom and dad, I do want to have a relationship with them and I don't love y'all any less. You know what I'm saying? And it'll be up to her. Now, I don't know if, if Team Mom will be around then. I hope, oh, honey, who knows? Uh, but it's still, you know, it is what it is. Um, With Amber, we see her, she's spiraling. And, you know, this episode is around the time where, you know, she pulled the machete on old boy and um, got arrested. So, you know, we just see... Um, no, I'm saying Corey. Gary and his wife, uh, Christina, talking about how... You... Okay, and I'm back. So, yeah, Gary and Christina was like, you know, she got to learn to keep her hands to herself. And I completely agree. Amber, you know, has a tendency to want to pop off like that. But, you know, I feel like you're not young and mature no more. You're a grown woman with two kids, you know, 18,000 dogs, and some money in your pocket. You should know how to behave you know, in relationships, you can't be out here just putting your hands on people because when they start putting their hands back, it's going to be a whole issue. You know what I'm saying? And if, if her baby daddy had came at her with a dang gun machete and punching up, whatever, it would have been an outrage. But because it's Amber, oh, you know, she has issues. She need to get that shit fixed. Okay? Or be single. If you can't, if you can't control yourself because you're just not at that point um, within your mental health that, that you can't keep yourself composed. Be single, bitch. Beat yourself up. Um, Macy. I'm happy that Macy is getting Bentley into some therapy. I think Bentley is old enough to where he needs to talk to somebody about whatever he's feeling because, you know what I'm saying, it can be this or that or the other. And so, it's just smart to have him have an outlet. I like that it's not his school counselor, so, you know, it's completely separate, so I think that's great. Um, I think it's dumb that Mackenzie and Ryan are pregnant with baby number two. Babies are a blessing, absolutely, but I also feel like I just want Ryan, I'm not saying they need to be separated or whatever, I just want Ryan to be in a completely sober space in mind for at least a year or two. Before adding more children to the mix. He barely in Bentley life. He barely been in the new little boy life. Because he's, you know, been dealing with things. So, I feel like, let them be let them be a couple. Let them be a whole husband and wife. But let that man get some stability in his life. You know, let him be clean for like a year or two. Before adding more children. Because, you know, that's just smart. Like, that's just smart. I don't know what else to say. Um, so yeah, that was that. Then, Macy, uh, 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 yeah. Um, and then last is the new girl, Mackenzie. I didn't see her much. I know her and her husband announced they, I guess, not together no more, you know, in real time today. Not today, but in real time within this week or so. Um, her mom being sick. I don't, I don't know if her mom has passed away. Or not, I, I don't follow, I haven't followed it enough, but I mean, it's heartbreaking to see this. At the same time, it's a blessing because her and her kids will have video, audio, visuals of her, you know, in her last days. And I feel like when you know a person is, you know, to that point 
every day make memories you know make videos take pictures as, as long as they are you know they are up to it but just so that when your kids who are younger they'll have that to look back on so i think it's great that her oldest son you know has the video from team mom I mean, from 16 and pregnant when, you know, they was on that show. So he'll be able to see his, you know, himself and his grandma when he's older or whatever. I think that's the blessing in disguise of her being on this show at that time. So, I, you know, my, my prayers are with her and her family. So that's my thought on, you know, Team Mom, uh, Team Mom 2. Team Mom OG come back on next month. I don't know if I'm going to review that or not. We shall see how interesting the first episode is. And that's usually how I gauge stuff. I'll review the first two episodes and th 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 it depends on how it goes. So um, we shall see. Um, Married at First Sight. A lot of people are like, why don't you review it anymore? Because I told y'all, you know, it didn't get interesting until like episode eight or nine. And so I was out of it. But let's just go couple by couple. Deanna and Greg is my favorite couple. Okay, I mean, they are my favorite couple, period. I feel like they are taking the proper steps to have some kind of healthy marriage. I don't think it's perfect at all. I think they're going to have things to work through. But it seems like they're taking the proper steps right now. You know, I'm happy they finally had sex and everything, even though I'm pretty sure he wants to have sex a little bit more. <laughs> um, or whatever but you know I feel like they're learning each other and that's a good thing and you can see that she's opening up more and more to him and I think he's kind of corny and so I also feel like he's he's trying to be less corny to where he thinks you know I, I think that's cute so I, I like them um Iris and Keith Iris ain't no virgin okay her vagina might be a virgin but i don't think the rest of her body is and i feel like you can't be on tv in no white dress if you've done sexual things um before so i feel like it was false advertisement okay she i'm a virgin no you not you just <laughs> you a tease okay that's what it was you know what i'm saying because you're doing if you did other things you can't i'm a i think that's crazy to do some things but not all things and then want to say, I'm going to hold off. I'm going to keep my virginity until I'm married. You then get married and still still don't do it and say, you know, but we can do other things. No. Do the thing. Okay, use your vagina. There's no better time for a woman to use her vagina. It's with her husband. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Keith seems to be nice or whatever. But Keith now says he wants to be sure that he's the one that wants to be the, her first. And I said, that's true. I, and it's because Iris is very immature sexually. Okay? Even, she's, she just, she can't have conversations about sex. She's like, oh, I don't want to. I'm like, girl, you too old for that. Cut it out. Okay? Take things serious. Period. Like, don't come on the show and then want to be like, oh, my God, I don't even want to have a conversation about sex. We've all seen the series before. You know what happened. Like, you know what happened when people get married. You have to do things. Something like, if you can't, if you're not mature enough to even have a conversation about sexual things and situations, you should have never came on the show because the show is for adults. And you acting real childish. And she's irking my nerves. Okay? She's irking my nerves. Everything is about her. I don't want to eat eggs because I'm a virgin. I don't want orange because I'm a virgin. I don't want to wear blue because I'm a virgin. I'm like, girl, you barely a virgin. Truth be told. Okay. Um, Jamie and Elizabeth need to divorce because they are the couple. I posted before. I said they are the couple who everyone knows, you know, they just stay together to not be single. You know, they see, they, they don't like each other. They get along here and there. But when they fight, it's crazy. And they don't even really like each other. But neither of them wants to walk away. It's kind of crazy. You know, seeing them arguing when cameras are gone, it's crazy. Leave me alone, Jamie. Stop. Go away. I'm looking like, girl, he keep leaving. <laughs> Threatening to divorce. And she's needy. And he's needy. He's an asshole. But she's also bitchy. I mean... They not made for each other, and neither of them are willing to budge to even make the other one happy. So it's it's just pure foolishness. So yeah, they are the couple who remind you a couple who everybody know they man they be always fussing and fight, but they ain't gonna separate because they don't want to be single. That's what that is. Um, and then lastly, we have what's some people's names? Amber and Matt. The minute Amber saw Matt, he was tall and was a basketball player. Matt got his um his 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 lackey i'll say that 
he don't want to pay rent somewhere and he wants free sex so he's like i'm gonna go on the show and get me a wife okay that's all the fact that when the cameras go off at night this fool leave the house and be gone all night who he, he has to have a whole secret family to the point to where she said i need you to come home by at least 2 30 in the morning you can't just be gone all night all the time or whatever and i need you to call me and tell me i'm looking like girl he ain't that's not he that's those are rules you give a child if you have to talk to your husband like a child because he don't come home every night you stupid divorce that man that man don't respect you and then he come home and then he smile and he just he's cute and tall and she just melts okay and now they in bed canoodling like a fucking jolly green giant and a little uh a little gnome or some shit i'm looking like girl i just cannot take it I, girl, she just she's foolish he don't want to be married he never did he just wants free room and board and vagina for free and you get he got both with this show this purity foolishness and i'm like is nobody gonna address the foolishness going on here if y'all won't i'm sure the fuck will so you know it's just aggravating to see how they acting like oh you know he don't be coming home sometime at night and she be in, in the house crying her ass off and while she in there crying her ass off he gone somewhere he walk back in the house and he be like Hey, I'm like, motherfucker, hey, you can't walk up in here and just say, hey, you've been gone for two nights. No, he, look, I would have already said divorce if it was me. And then when they had a little thing like, okay, you can say now if you want to continue on with the marriage or if you want to call it quiz now. The fact that she did not call it quiz, but she admitted how her husband does not come home. Sometimes out the whole week, she only sees him four days a week and he ain't playing basketball. He ain't going to work. Where he going? No husband should be out all times of the night, multiple times a week. That's just stupid. It's stupid and it's petty. Okay? So that's my thoughts on that show. Um, The other show I watched yesterday, or not watching today, Below Deck Med. I love Below Deck Med. I, I love that show. I'm pissed off that they sent June home, you know, Anastasia, who took on the job of chef, which she should have never done, she was in off her head, so she told the captain, Sandy, how you know what I'm saying? I'm so stressed. It's just so much. But you put yourself in that situation knowing you were not a chef. You should have said, I can help for this charter, but you probably need to get a real chef because I'm not a real chef. Girl, anybody that can make burgers and steak, that's, that's easy, but she's not making no real quality food. You know what I'm saying? Um, but whatever. So when she admitted, I can't do this anymore like it's just team too much for me like i think you should call the other chef and they got chef ben to come back the fact that captain sandy sent june home and put anastasia back as a third too i'm like i felt like that because anastasia took on a new position once she could not do that position anymore, she should have went home she gave up her third two position to be the chef so if you can't be the chef go home i felt so bad how they did June because she was right. Y'all knew this and y'all kind of just used me as a placeholder and then tell me that y'all had me thinking like, I I flew all the way over here to be here to to basically help y'all out and then at the end of the day y'all just kind of tossed me aside and told me today I have to leave. Like the fuck, the fuck, girl. I was pissed off. And then Travis old drunk ass who slapped Anastasia in the face because he was drunk and thought he did a love tap and he didn't. I don't like how Aisha and the dude who she fucking or whatever was making fun of it as if it wasn't a big issue. I'm like, Travis clearly is an alcoholic. Clearly, when he drinks, he drinks too much. And he has a whole problem because he doesn't see the... He, the way you know somebody's an alcoholic is because when they drink, they drink too much, and they never see it's a problem. That's a part of being an alcoholic. The other part is you just always drinking. Um, when he drinks, he does too much. And I think Joao was the only... Joao and, 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 and Colin were the only ones who were rightfully upset about what happened. You Any man who see a, a dude slap a woman, even if it was like a little tap he slapped the heart the slap was hard because you heard it and it woke her up so the fact that nobody or that only 
you know, Colin and Joao was the most vocal about how bad it was to Travis pissed me off. But Aisha and the dude she's sleeping with who was a slacker, they so high off vagina and penis fucking each other or whatever. They didn't care. And then for the dude with the curly hair who's working with Aisha to say, you know, well, I do think we did was wrong or whatever, but because everyone, everybody else is on this case, I just don't come at him like that even if I agree with them. That's why the the the... the the end is continuing because nobody wants to call him out on it. And then when someone is calling him out on it, y'all make it seem as if, oh, it's no big deal. No, that's dumb. So I like that Asia, not Asia, Anastasia, um, then talked to Travis the following day after, after he basically apologized, even though he didn't like acknowledge how wrong he was in my opinion i'm happy she talked to him and like it's not like what you did wasn't right you drink too much or whatever and you know you there's never a reason to put your hands on a woman are you trying to say i'm, I'm a woman she's like no that ain't my point my point is it's not that you beat women you're an alcoholic and you drink too much okay that's the issue and you need to address that shit um I think that's it. Oh, and then because they sent June home, which pissed Colin off. Colin's like, you know what? I don't even really want to be here. So, you know, I'm going to leave. And if I leave, baby, I'll keep June. I don't think that's going to work because June is astute, not a deckhand. So if you leave, they're going to still send her ass home and have to bring you, bring somebody in to replace you. So we see the little clip of Captain Steve, like, you know, like, please don't leave. Like, I need you. Please don't leave. I don't think Colin should leave. I think he's... There's three trials left. I think he should finish it out and then don't come back next season. Boom. But going home isn't going to help June. It isn't. And I'm like, whatever. So that's all of my car conversation with random TV show stuff that I don't really review. Um, and my thoughts on stuff. Okay. If y'all want more videos like these, put in the comment section what shows do y'all want me to do random chit chat with my feelings about it and not a whole thing and then we shall see how that goes but as y'all see i'm home for going to the house and chill out um until it's time to review whatever comes on on tuesdays peace